Okay, now continuing on our theme of the current state and future needs of management, monitoring, and research activities, as well as a presenter from the uh, U.S. Forest Service, our next speaker is the Forest Supervisor for the Green Mountain and Finger Lakes National Forest, Colleen Madrid. Uh, Colleen began her career as a biologist and later worked as a Forest Service liaison to the uh, California Department of Fish and Game as a forest biologist and regional wildlife program manager. She then served as a district ranger on the Zigzag Ranger District in Oregon for six years before moving to Arizona to become the district ranger on the Ca uh, Cave Creek Ranger District. Uh, and, and since now has is been the uh, Forest Sur Supervisor for the Green Mountain and Finger Lakes uh, National Forest. She earned her BS degree from the University of California, <coughs> Davis, and a master's degree from San Jose State University. So please welcome Colleen Madrid.
challenges that we face. We're also seeing, and I think this is a good thing for us, we're seeing changes in how that money comes down. We talked about silos. Well, internally in the Forest Service, we have our own silos. So we have natural resources, and that's divided up into soil and, and water versus fisheries and wildlife versus timber management. And in the past, those, those thumbs didn't cross. The direction that the agency wants to go is more integrated use of those money. And so we've had pilots. We've had three regions of the Forest Service that are in pilots. You, integrating those funds to come up with and work on watershed restoration and ecosystem level projects. So that leads to the next link in the chain political intervention and agency changes. We are trying to go to a more integrated approach. The Green Mountain National Forest, and we have two that I manage, this Green Mountain in Vermont and Green Lakes in New York, the Green Mountain National Forest has been doing integrated resource restoration for about 10 years. The Green Mountain has been ahead of the pack in, in doing this. We've done it on our own without having the Washington office say, hey, we're gonna do this in a fall away. Congress is very nervous about us integrating our resources. Now, why would Congress be nervous about that? Congress really loves Forest Service. And the reason they love us is because they give us X number of dollars and they get X product out of us. So those, you've heard about Forest Service targets. We talk about targets a lot, right? So we have, you know, a target of 50 million board feet. Or we have a target of, of uh, 10 miles of stream restored, or 10 miles, or 10 acres of lakes restored. Those are our targets. They don't necessarily fit into an ecological restoration model, do they? So it's a widget system, and that's the system that we've been within, and that's the political constraint that we are dealing with. And of course, lay on top of the political constraint of every four to eight years these, these days, we get a different administration who has new ideas about how we should manage and what we should focus on. Um, so some of the, the good things that this administration has done is that they have had a focus on us working outside our own boundaries so that we're not our own silo. And I, I recognize the fact that the Green was doing that before this administration came in. It made it a lot easier when we got direction from the top that this is what we really want you to do. Um, I don't know how many of you recognize the fact that one out of five Americans get their water off of national forests and lands. So watershed restoration and improving watershed conditions is critical to us. We're, we supply water to five communities at this point in time off the green. Um, and we're gonna be looking at ways to um, discuss with those communities uh, funding for ecosystem services. They've had some success with this in the West where, where um, uh, the, the communities pay into a pot for the forest to do uh, watershed restoration to keep their water clean so that the community can help us keep their water clean keep the water flowing through the taps. So we've had lots of different initiatives. Dean uh, Erickson talked about the timing that we have in the federal government versus research timing. Um, the next bullet there, American Fair Outdoors, is a great example of, of government impatience. Um, when we got the originally the American Fair Outdoors initiative, I remember sitting in on a phone call and the deputy undersecretary for the Department of Agriculture was on that phone call. I've never been on a phone call with the Deputy <laughs> Secretary there on a specific agenda. And basically, they, they said, we're gonna do, we're gonna work collaboratively, we're gonna restore watersheds, we're gonna do all this great work outside of our boundaries, and you have a year, you, they gave us a year for each watershed. Well, how many of you in here think that you can restore a watershed in a year? <laughs> no, I didn't think so either. But, what we did was we tried to work it into and, and cover several of them through the work we were already doing in specific watersheds in the state. So we made it work. It's one thing about, <laughs> one thing about the agency, the agency really pretty adaptive. So um, 
some of the things that did get carried over, which are which are helpful to the state and to our work, and continue that 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 uh, path down towards collaborative work that we're doing. Um, the name is to communities. That's what we have here is um, secure rural schools initiative. So the state receives funding, and that funding goes to firefighting, search and rescue, specifically in the state. In other states, that there are different emphasis areas. We only receive a certain portion of that in, in Vermont. Um, stewardship contracting. We've been using this authority for quite a while. We're hoping in the agency that we're going to get a permanent authority for it because this would be very useful. We through this. We sell a timber sale, and the funds from that timber sale go to restoration activities. Um, and we've been very successful at accomplishing other goals, including like GSI goals, you know, timber sale improvement goals, um, uh, watershed restoration goals. We're going to be spreading that into uh, uh, working and in recreation initiatives, like re removing trails that are causing damage to watersheds in the future um, through this, uh, this uh, program that we that Congress has, we keep getting it approved year after year after year, so we're hoping we're going to get it permanently. And then cost recovery rights of way land uses, we have the authority to collect funding up front for doing the environmental assessments on these uh, rights of way, special uses land, uh, and land use activities, so that because we can't afford to do it, we were at a point where we just couldn't do them because we didn't have the money to do all of those requests that were coming, that were coming in. So those are some things that carry on the like continuing resolution that, that are useful to us. Um, the economy and its effect on restoration and resource management. You can see the emphasis areas that are highlighted up there. What I would emphasize to you is that I have seen a change in the agency. I've been with the agency for 24 years. And I've seen this huge shift from, from being, we're the Forest Service, we stay in our ground, to, and we focus in those individual silo resource areas, to we are part of a community, and it's important to engage the community and have that community participate <coughs> with us in our land management activities. And if we can help outside the boundaries in those communities, that's the direction we need to go. And I believe that that direction will continue, even if we get an administrative change. <coughs> so the things that are being focused on here from the top are restoration, strengthening communities, including supporting diverse employment, and, and wildland fire. So you see wildland fire is still a big ticket item. Every time we have a big fire year, wildland fire is going to stay at the top of those priorities for a few years until it goes down. And then Kind of like a uh, a G, you get the peak and it dies, and you get the other peak and it dies down. So, um, one fire has been a, been a piece of our uh, it's been an impact on on us in more ways than one throughout the years. Um, the one shift that I saw, and, and you know, I was thinking as, as Dean Erickson was talking about silos, I think we have a little bit of a silo going on here too because we're really natural resource focused. The impacts, a lot of the impacts on land are from the public and, it, and it's not just you know taking humor off it's public recreation it's you know the larger our, our public's become the more people we have in the world the greater impact on natural resources and we may be at a critical time in the world today because we're starting to see some of those tipping points get closer and closer and closer and we, i really believe that we, part of our responsibility here is to bring the social sciences in to, to discuss and have people understand the value of natural resources and forests, as well as their role in things that are happening in the world that are impacting natural resources. So with that emphasis that I've been talking to you about as far as increased focus on people, uh, getting rid of the deficit, improving the economy, there's been a shift in the last, in this administration to what what is the agency doing to create jobs? So, and I would say that this emphasis is just is, is equal to our natural resource work. So this gives you an, uh, an idea of the Forest Service as a whole, what it brings to the gross domestic product through our natural resource work, but this is mostly the outcomes. And this gives you a, a, just a different perspective <coughs> 
how the breakdown of that is. And you'll notice that, where's Timber? Oh, Tori's Timber. Where's the Purple. Purple. Okay, so purple. Of course, thank you. Purple's not very big, is it? <laughs> so we've gone from purple being really big when I came in to the agency in the 80s to recreation being really big. That's green. So, um, and out west, livestock grazing is, is pretty big too. Um, minerals and energy production is increasing. So there's increased pressure on us in terms of opening up national forces and lands to energy production. So those are some of the changing trends that are going on in, in our agency. So what's our niche? What's our role? Well, we believe that we represent the rural character and value of life in Vermont. We are the largest contiguous piece of public land, even though we're only 5% of the state. Um, and the third bullet, I think, is really important because we're in a day's drive for 70 million people. And we, if we focus only on Vermont, we're going to be missing a large scope of the impacts that are coming to the forest, and probably, especially to southern Vermont, because you, we have people coming, coming from Connecticut to snowmobile on us. We have people coming from Massachusetts. We have people coming from Montreal. We've got folks coming from all over the place. And unless we reach out to those areas as well, we're not going to be getting our, our, our information about the value of forests to them. So these are our, this is what we think are specific niches. Um, the last bullet is partnerships. We've gone in this state from being a money source for partnerships to not being that so much anymore. We have lots of partners. And in the past, when money was flush, we had lots of money to give to those partners to help us get the work done. And uh, a couple of years ago, I remember talking to a partner, and I was told that they wouldn't be able to work with us anymore because we couldn't fund them. That's an issue. And in my mind, that's not really what a partnership is. A partnership is we're all helping each other to get a common goal achieved. So our interest in partnerships is increasing in lifts and downs. So we are interested in working with UDM. We are interested in our working with the state. We're interested in working with lots of people. I believe that the public has a responsibility that it needs to redeem its responsibilities on your national forest. It's not my national forest, it's all of our national forests. And we have, we have opportunities to do that. So um, this just kind of gives you a list of some of the things that we've been partnering on. But that doesn't mean that we would be interested in partnering on you know, the social aspects of recreation and its impact on natural resources. There's, all, there's always opportunities. So, this is an example of some of the new restoration partnerships that we've had uh, that we're working on. And we are open to ideas and proposals and anything that you can come up with for partnerships.
keep our fingers crossed we fill in a hydrotech position as well because water is something that is an emerging issue and I think it's going to be critical. Or even though we have lots of water here, it, I, I think that I can see a day when pressures sure. start mounting on those resources. So thank you. Thank you. Thank you very much, Pauline. Thank you. All right.